<clears throat> Good morning. We look today at uh, 1 Samuel 13 and 14. And as we begin chapter 13, um, I'm just going to tell you, there's a lot of discrepancy. Um, some, Bibles, some Bibles don't have verse 1. And the Bible that I have in front of me now, the uh, New Revised Standard Version, says that Saul was dot, 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 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned dot, 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 and two years over Israel. Other versions say that he was 30 years old and reigned anywhere from two years to 42 years, or he was 40 years old and reigned for, you know, two years or many years. And so uh, I, I don't expect that as we read through this, we're going to find out exactly, or if we're going to figure out exactly how old Saul was or how many years he reigned. But but one thing we do know is that uh, he wasn't in favor with God, uh, and we're going to find that out right away. Uh, you know, Saul, uh, Samuel had told him to you know, wait seven days before he did anything, and so this first verse, you know, is is a summary of of, of Saul's rule, and then we, in verse two, then we we back up to just present day, you know, when Saul has just been appointed king and he is to wait these seven days for Samuel to come. And it says that Saul chose 3,000 out of Israel. 2,000 were with him and 1,000 were with his son Jonathan. And they were uh, preparing to do battle against the Philistines who had been oppressing them for years and years and years. And he blows the trumpet and says, let's all Hebrew here, you know, and that, you know, and Saul had, had uh, gone up and had defeated uh, a garrison of the Philistines. And, um, and I'm not sure just where or how that one happened. I, but, but the Philistines mustered them to, to fight against Israel. And, you know, it says that Saul had 3,000 men. Well, the Philistines come with 30,000 chariots, 6,000 horsemen, and troops like the Sands of the seashore, you know, uh, tremendous numbers of people. And the Israelites tremble before them and they begin to hide out in caves and holes and in rocks and everything and and um, they're just hiding out. And so Saul was waiting these seven days and when the seventh day came, you know, and Samuel didn't come, Saul takes matters into his own hand and he offers a sacrifice to God an unlawful sacrifice to God. So here, here Samuel is, or Saul is king, and he's taking the duties of the priest, the duties of the prophet, into his own hands. You know, he's, it's you know, and, and the people will later on will say, you know, do whatever you feel is good. And it goes back to you know, we read a couple of different times, you know, everyone was doing what was right in their own mind. You know, and it, it just. It just doesn't work. And so Saul's unlawful sacrifice had just ended. He had just finished this burnt offering sacrifice to God, and Samuel comes. And he says, what have you done? You know, I mean, I don't know if he used that much, ex, you know, in his voice or, you know, but, but you know, uh, what have you done? You know, you have not listened to God. You have not listened to the word that God gave me to give to you, you know, to wait seven days and... And that I would come. And, and I think about that, you know, we, we get impatient so often for things, you know. And, and um, you know, we say, I can't wait for Christmas, or I can't wait for my birthday, or I can't wait. Or, you know, and if you know, if something is supposed to happen at, at 5 o'clock in the afternoon, but, you know, we're ready at 1.30, you know, and, or, you know, for something that we're excited about, that we can't wait. And, and often we do that same thing. We kind of push the agenda and we find out that you know we're better off to wait and let things happen in their own course of time uh, and Samuel says to Saul you have done foolishly you have not kept the commandment of the Lord that he commanded you the Lord would have established your reign over Israel for years you know had you been faithful Samuel says to Saul God would have established your rule for years forever but now your kingdom will not continue. And so, you know, when we hear that, I mean, it, it sounds more like maybe Saul's reign was for just two years rather than 42 years. But, 
you know, we have these conflicting um, stories and nothing, you know, the, the early Hebrew texts don't have an age that Saul was, you know, when he was made as king or any of those things that way. So there, there's much we don't know. Uh, but even though Samuel had given Saul this, you know, I mean, you've done wrong in the eyes of the Lord. Uh, and Samuel left and went on his way. And, but the rest of the people followed Saul to join the army. And, and then, you know, Saul counts the people and there's 600 with him. I thought just a minute ago, there were 3,000, 2,000 with him and 1,000 with Jonathan. So, I mean, I don't know what happened to the other 1,400. Uh, I, I can't find him. <laughs> but anyway, uh, there, uh, it, it says that, you know, that uh, the Israelites were, were very poorly equipped for battle. There were no blacksmiths in the land of Israel. The Philistines were afraid that if they had blacksmiths that they would be able to make swords and spears and shields. So uh, for the Israelites, even if they needed their plowshares sharpened or their sickles sharpened, they had to take them to a, a, a blacksmith in the Philistine uh, area because, because of the, you know, under the thumb rule of the Philistines and, you know, the oppression that way. And, you know, so, you know, we, sometimes we maybe don't understand just how bad it was for people. And, and it's the same today. We don't understand how tough the conditions are for some people in some of these countries that have, you know, uh, dictators, uh, despots that are in charge, you know, that, that don't listen to the people. Anyway, though, there were no smiths, but it says that Saul and Jonathan had swords. And so then, you know, chapter 14 starts out that one day, you know, one day, no definite day, but just one day, Jonathan says to his uh, armor bearer, to the young man who carried his armor, come, let's go over to the Philistine garrison and, and see what's up. And then he you know, he kind of says, you know, if they say, come on over here, you know, we'll go and then this. If they do this, we'll do this. So he's he's kind of, uh, you know, making his own prophecy or something, you know, but he's he's planning ahead. So it's just Jonathan and his armor bearer, two guys that go into this Philistine camp. And when you get up to verse 10, you know, you know he says, if they say, come up to us, we will go, for the Lord has given them into our hand. And I mean... How does Jonathan know that? I mean, but anyway, they go, just Jonathan and his armor bearer, and and they persevere, and they, it says they kill over 20 people within, it's about an acre of ground, you know, not a very big area where this where this command post was anyway, you know, he kind of wiped out a command post, and, and, uh, and and somehow the you know the Saul's lookout Saul you know, he's got he's got people watching and he the word comes back to Saul about this battle and and he says well call the roll and find out well who's not here and well they find out that Jonathan is the one that's not there and so they you know there's a you know talks about a battle you know and Saul says bring the ark of God here and. And while Paul was talking to the priest, the tumult in the camp of the Philistines increased more and more. And, and there was a rout of this group of Philistines anyway. And Saul had made a command early in the day that, that no man, none of the soldiers were to eat anything until the victory was assured. And word somehow got to just about everybody except Jonathan. And Jonathan dips his staff into a honeycomb that you know, they're just honey all over the place and he dips his staff in and he eats some honey and then he tries to get his men with him to eat it and one of his men says but your father gave a command and they wouldn't do that and and so this is one more thing that you know and Saul had said cursed be anyone who eats anything this day it will be his death and so Jonathan has a death sentence but Jonathan and his men have been successful in battle and when it comes out to the, the drawing of the lots or the casting of the lots to, you know, and the lot falls upon Jonathan and, and Saul says, you know, basically, well, this is it. I mean, you, you must die. But the people, the people rally around Jonathan and say, but look at all that he did. We can't, you can't, you can't take his life. And you know, so, so they spared Jonathan and, and and so we finish reading chapter 14, you know, it says that Saul spent his entire 
kingship in battle with the different people on his borders, the Moabs, the Ammonites, the Philistines. He was, you know, con continually at war, continually pressing the, the strong and the valiant and the mighty into service, just as Samuel had told the people would happen when they had a king. And so, you know, I mean, there, you know, it was fifth, uh, last chap verse of chapter 14, there was hard fighting against the Philistine all the days of Saul. And Saul saw any strong or valiant warrior here, he took him into his service. So Saul's kingship, whereas if he had followed God and listened to the word of God, would have been a, a blessed uh, kingship. But whereas he didn't follow God's word right away, he had trouble all throughout it. Tomorrow we'll continue as we read through 1 Samuel. May God richly, no, tomorrow we have worship in Sutton, so we'll pick up 1 Samuel again on Monday morning. You're welcome to join us 9 o'clock for worship in Sutton on Palm Sunday tomorrow.